Hello, hello my friends. I am so happy to be here with you today. I wanted to talk with you about something that's been on my mind quite a bit lately, things that I have worked out myself and continue to work on in my life, and I think it would help you too to share a few things that I've learned about this topic. So what we're going to talk about today is overwhelm. And the thing about overwhelm is many of us moms work in a space of overwhelm quite a bit. And when I have people find out that I have seven kids and that I'm a single mom, one of the first things that they ask me is, how do you do it all? You seem like you're doing a lot. And the truth is, is that we're all doing a lot. It's how are you managing your situation and what's going on? So this particular skill is important to me in my life so that I can manage to do more for my kids and more for myself and accomplish the goals that I have. And when we are in a state of overwhelm, it can be paralyzing and it can be frustrating. And sometimes we can feel like a failure because we're simply stuck. So yeah, let's talk about it. First of all, I want to talk about what's the definition. I'm going to look down here at my notes. The definition that I found online that I thought was a really good definition that resonates with me is overwhelm is beset by intense emotion that is difficult to manage. Definitely, we can all resonate with that. It can affect your ability to think and act rationally, and it can affect your ability to function. So let's paint the picture here. You're trying to make dinner. You want the table to be all ready so that when that food's ready, you can just get it served, you know, have your family sit down and be able to eat dinner. And before you know it, you realize you're missing ingredients for your meal, or maybe you've just burned something that you were cooking. And in the process of that, other things are happening in the house. It could be your toddler who is potty training, just peed all over the floor or the cat puked or, you know, there's just all these things that happen around us that can be overwhelming, right? Overstimulating. And what happens is when we're in this situation, there's different ways that you can take in the information that's happening. And a lot of times us women, we like to try to be super mom or whatever. And we try to put out all the fires at once. And what, what I've noticed is that I will find myself in a state of overwhelm at some point if I keep trying to manage so many things at once. And that's when, you know, the tears are going to come or the yelling starts or whatever, like the shutdown that happens will be because we've got too many inputs coming in and not of enough of yourself to give to those around you. So overwhelm will set in. When I think of times in my life that I've been overwhelmed, it's when I'm not slowing down my pace and I'm trying to accomplish too many things at the same time. Maybe I didn't prepare ahead of time or invest into that, my goals for that day. And I'm just kind of just floating to try to like, okay, what do I do next? I'm not sure where to start, that sort of thing. Another time that I've noticed that I deal with overwhelm a lot is when I have a low level anxiety of something that I haven't dealt with and I'm trying to ignore that so that I can accomplish other things. So that low level anxiety has got me kind of heightened where I don't have good focus and concentration on what I'm doing and that can also um, affect a person. So here's something that I've implemented in my own life that has helped me tremendously and that's what I call the 20 minute rule. The 20 minute rule is when I notice that I'm, I'm starting to feel like the pressure's mounting, right? Like too many things are coming at me at once or things aren't working out the way they were supposed to. And now I'm way off on these bunny rabbit trails trying to like regroup is I'll usually kind of like pause and think this thought in my head of like in 20 minutes, is this situation going to feel this way? Typically it's not. Typically that um, intense emotion that I'm feeling inside is going to subside. It kind of comes like a wave. We're at its crest. We're at its peak. It's, it's getting bigger, 
but I know that in 20 minutes, it's going to be fine. For example, if one of my kids keeps coming in and like needing me for something and I'm in the middle of dinner and I really can't do both. If I start yelling at that child, get out of here or whatever, later I'm going to have that remorse for yelling at my kid because, you know, I don't want to be a screamer and I'm going to, I might even feel shame about it. I might feel stupid. Like, why do I always yell at my kids? Well, it's because I was having that intense emotion and I had a choice of what I wanted to do in that moment. Sometimes in that moment, we want to like push people out of the way, right? Get out of my way. I'm trying to do something and you're in my way. Now, does that mean that I have to stop what I'm doing and give them my 100% attention in that moment? I don't believe so. I just believe that we get to choose how we want to treat that person in that moment, even though all of our emotions are saying like, push, push back, push back, explode, right? But when we can pull back the thought to say, in 20 minutes, it's not going to feel like this. I'm going to be fine. So let's just kind of ride through the intensity for a moment, take a breath. And my second tip is pull it down to one thing at a time. One of the mottos in my house with my kids is I do one thing at a time. Because what I used to try to do was all the things at the same time. I was like, I can multitask. I'm great at multitasking. I can do so many things at the same time. But the truth is, is I really wasn't as efficient and wasn't doing as good of a job that I wanted to do because I was trying to manage so many things. Now, maybe I was doing good at it. Maybe you do really well at multiple, like multitasking. But here's my, my thought on this is that we're great at it until suddenly we're not. And what I mean by that is we might be really plugging away at a lot of different things at the same time, but then when those little fires start sparking and problems start happening in all these different areas, now it's kind of like, what now? Where do I start? What should I do? Like, maybe I should just quit. I'm going to hide, right? But if we're focusing in on, I'm going to take care of this one thing first, and then I'll come to that, it's much easier to find your path forward. So let's go back to that dinner example. I'm making dinner and I've got people that want me or need me. My toddler just peed their pants and they're potty training and I know they need attention. What I can do is I can stop dinner to go help the toddler, or I can keep that toddler in a holding pattern for a little while, maybe elicit some help from um, one of my older kids to help that I can, that's good at that. Or if I don't have that, I can put that child like away in the bathroom for me. Let me finish here till I can come to a stopping point. So I say to my kids all the time, this is a motto in my house says I do one thing at a time, one thing at a time. I'm over here. I'm doing this one. I love you, but one thing at a time, I'm still over here and I'm, I'm still going to get to you. Just got to wait your turn. And what that's done for me is it's given me the permission to give myself a break. I don't have to be all those things. I think back to in my college years, I used to work at this bank and at the bank, I was in this little drive through and picture like the main bank is over here where you do your business. But then there's like this drive through building that's separated and it's, it's just on its own. Right? So myself and several other workers, we ran this drive through and it was a very fast paced job. We had constant stream of customers, very, very busy hours. And we shared, I think it was two computers. So back then, you know, we didn't all have our own touch screen. <laughs> so people would send their transactions in and I would have to go check the account at the computer. And many times we'd be lined up waiting in line to use that computer next. We had this one employee. She was a lot older than me. She was probably like 30 to 40 years older than I was at the time. And her name was Connie. And Connie was like the think tortoise and the hare, right? Like the tortoise. She was definitely the tortoise and I was the hare. And so were many of the other younger tellers there. And we would always be being like, hurry up, Connie, hurry up, Connie, you need to get this done, you know? And Connie, her response to us would always be, listen, I have two speeds. 
My two speeds are slow and stop. Which one do you want? And we would get so frustrated and we would just, uh, that, you know, and like keep going on and just kind of razz her because she didn't work as fast as we thought she should. But what's funny is here I am around like 20 years later and I'm finding myself in situations where I realize that I need to say that I need to have a slow speed. Though it, well, it's not really slow, but the people around me think it is a slow speed or stop, right? We've got to have a boundary. She held such a good boundary with us so that she could keep her inner peace, so that she could keep her focus and she wouldn't make mistakes because she wasn't rushed in her job. We can do the same thing in our homes. So I encourage you, you don't have to move slow and stop, but hold a good boundary with those around you that you love them. You're going to take care of them. You're going to get to it, but you need to focus on your one thing at a time. So what's the bigger perspective in your situation? Is that one thing that's stressing you out, that's causing overwhelm, is it a really big deal or not? Sometimes it's pretty small things that we get hung up on and we need to just chill it out. And we need to look and see like, does this matter in an hour? Does this matter in a few days? Will this matter in five years? And if it doesn't, maybe evaluate, like, why am I putting so much emphasis on this? And then um, the last thing I wanted to bring up was addressing what's going on here. Okay, so we know that the circumstances are crazy. We know that we need to respond in a good way. So we need to have some behavior modification if we're like blowing up or if we're just stuck in our situation. What's the thought that's creating that intensity? And when you identify that thought, how does it make you feel? Is that feeling serving you? And so when you feel this way, how does that make you act? What do you do about it? Are you retreating? Are you giving up? Are you whining about it? <laughs> Are you complaining? And that's okay. We all need to vent. We all need to complain about this or that here and there. But when you have this thought and then you start feeling that way, what are you doing about it? What's your behavior because of it? And finally, where does that leave you? What does your circumstance look at because of that line of, oh, I was thinking this. So this is how I felt. And then I just did this. And now this is where I find myself. So let's go back to the kitchen scenario. I'm making dinner, I'm making tacos, and my toddler peed his pants because he's potty training and he needs help, right? we got problems going on. So another kid's coming to scream to me saying, Mommy, Mommy, so-and-so peed their pants, you know, and I'm kind of paying attention to that, and I'm burning the meat, okay? The meat on the stove is now burning. It's, it's getting gross. So I'm kind of, oh, oh, what do I do? What do I do? This is where I have to take captive my thoughts, right? Okay, we can bring order. We can line our thoughts up to what needs to be done now so that we can function, love the people around us, and um, have a good result. So if my thought is, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. You guys get out of here. You're in my way. That's not going to yield the fruit I want. That's not walking in the integrity that I want. So we've got to take captive the thought that we have. So... Okay, little guy, I want you to go wait in the bathroom for me. I'll be in there in a little bit. Finish up what you're doing. Make your plan for what's next. Because in an hour, this really isn't going to be a big deal anymore. Tomorrow, we're going to laugh about yesterday's dinner was kind of crazy. Five years from now, probably aren't going to remember it, right? So we want to prioritize our thoughts first so that our behavior can follow our feelings. So we think, oh, I got this. It's okay. Things are going sideways, but I got this. So then our feelings aren't so rough. And then our behavior will follow with a more strategized plan, right? Because when we look back at the definition of overwhelm, I had said it can affect your ability to think and act rationally. So in order to rein it in a little bit, 
take a breath, identify, does this matter? Is this a big deal or not? And address the thoughts you're having around it. And I'm telling you, these things can go like this. It can happen quick. This isn't like a, you need to find a quiet space and meditate and figure it all out. You can do this. You can totally take your thoughts captive because what'll happen is, is when you take that thought captive, it's going to create this pattern that's going to have an end result that you're going to like. It's going to be better. It's going to create a life that's much happier for you and your family and those around you. But really, this is mostly about you. I want to see you to be happy, you to find peace, joy, comfort. And the Lord tells us when we take our thoughts captive, because most of our thoughts are going to naturally default to the negative. It's going to be a survival mode. It's going to be a, what do I do next? How can I fix this? Everything's falling, right? When we get those thoughts under check, the Lord's going to bless you. And he's going to give you his mind, the mind of Christ, that brings order, that brings love, that brings clarity of what you want. So I'm going to be addressing more of this topic next time I get together with you. We're going to talk about strategies for setting yourself up for success. So what strategies can we use to be successful in that realm of anxiety and overwhelm? And I look forward to talking more with you about that. Leave me some comments or feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have. And I'd love to talk more about this.